uh, I was uh, mostly uh, communicating with the people. Uh, I found my internship uh, via my friend. I found my uh, first job via my other friend. And I was a reference to my third job uh, also via my friend. So I would say uh, uh, communication wise, and then if you keep your uh, uh, network updated and uh, you communicate and you show your int uh, and then you express your interest to your community, then I think there will be someone that can reference you or to show you a good a a direction in your job search. I was looking at companies that I already had on my mind, things that I like, places and uh, cities where I would like to live and to work. Um, so basically t making sort of a mind map, thinking about where could you see yourself in a couple of years, which are the interests that you have, and then going one step after another and trying to get in contact, uh, sending out applications and yeah. I uh, responded to, yeah, just vacancies online. Not just all of them, but only the ones that felt really, uh, I felt that would really fit me. Um, and besides that, I did some networking conversations. So I talked to people uh, about what they thought would uh, be good approaches to start with, or they could connect me to others. If I remember well, I found my first job uh, via LinkedIn. And I would say that LinkedIn and other like job portals, like I think I use High Talent, for instance, are, were like my main tools. Um, but still, when I was writing my thesis, I started gathering information about the job market, about uh, certain positions, like um, I did this with colleagues. I also went to um, the FEB uh, Careers Week in the university. So I think it's, yeah, it was during a week, there were like many workshops, many like open lectures with companies and there were like also companies on the, yeah, yeah, the, at the entrance of the university, the hall. Um, yeah, just, yeah, to, to tell students, uh, tell the students about the job vacancies they had open, um, about, yeah, what they do um, and everything. And it was really like insightful and I think it really inspired me to just, start looking for a job and build a proper, like a proper LinkedIn profile, because I think that's very important. Um, and also I improve my um, CV, so update it and keep it up to date. Um, and that's how I started basically, just focusing on my LinkedIn, on my CV, looking up for online for good opportunities and just talking with people. Networking is really important. Um. I just uh, found a vacancy and I uh, wrote a letter and I got invited <laughs> and I got hired. So <laughs> I, I just went for it and uh, as time went, I got more into actions and I learned through the interviews as well. And I, I totally blanked in the first interviews and it was just, I was just so completely terrible. I mean, the first two, three interviews just, yeah, th there was no way that, that I would get that job. Um, yeah. But it helped me understand how interviews work. That's very important because if you have your first interview, it's frightening. So it was quite random, to be very honest. So after I graduated uh, from university, I went to Taiwan for half a year to study Chinese. And so I actually decided that I wanted to go back to Europe for uh, getting a job. Um, so I had to look for a job from a distance, which is a bit more complicated, but not impossible. Um, so I applied for some of the traineeships that were open um, and this was going a bit slow in my opinion because obviously you want to start working like right away especially as I've been abroad already. So then a friend of mine um, he was working for this foundation already and he was saying that there was a position coming up and uh, it was in the healthcare segment um, it was a european project and it was in berlin which were all things that really sounded attractive to me so i just decided to just apply and basically that's how i i got my job so really random via via i would never have found it online <laughs> In the beginning, like um, I didn't know what to do uh, when I graduated. I I was also as very confused as confused as probably a lot of people, and then I asked ask a lot of uh, my uh, alumni as well, and then uh, to to see if I can get some advice from them. 
and they ask me to just explore your options and then try to do something that you think that you probably not end up hating. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I, as I don't know what to do. I don't know what I like, but I apparently know what I dislike. So um, I kind of like um, try to find a job that I feel like I might fall in love with um, later on. For example, something about business development, something about marketing, because I really like um, uh, communicating with a person uh, instead of communicating with the data. So I feel like, okay, I want to be engaged in more like a human to human uh, kind of like job. So I think um, that's what I kind of like to narrow down uh, my, uh, you know, search scope. And then I... I kind of um, feel like that company offered me a great opportunity because the international developments uh, specialized in the business developments and human resources as well. So that requires a lot of um, human to human uh, interaction. So I feel like, oh, that might be something I might be good at. So that's kind of uh, the reason, it's so kind of a decisive uh, uh, criteria that I choose to choose uh, what I want to specialize on afterwards. I don't even know for now which niche I want to specialize yet I think that's something that really comes after a couple of years of experience so you shouldn't shouldn't be too focused on that just find like a broad broad uh, topic or something that you really like and that you're interested in where you have personal interest in and then it goes when you start working you find your way you see your opportunities you always can change jobs so i think it's it's not too too important to focus already on a certain niche it's more like something that you learn as you go uh, for instance, um, I really, I always liked numbers and I knew that I, I liked accounting a lot. Um, and then I, I had an idea that, oh, maybe like logistics and operations is also like quite interesting. Um, I was also really into sustainability. So yeah, when I was studying, I think I did a few internships in um, more like accounting and accounts payable and accounts receivable as well. Um, and then my first job was yeah just in accounting in general ledger accounting which is still quite broad but it was actually a traineeship so I got exposed to many um, other areas within finance um, and then I, I enjoyed my yeah, that job, first job experience a lot I stayed there like for almost uh, three years but I was also like I started missing a lot um, dealing with a final product it was very intangible um, and for me just due to my position so then i was like okay like i think it's time to just start looking for a new job something that is more aligned with my interests at the moment and yeah this opportunity of um yeah in inventory accounting just came my way and it really bridges all my areas of interest so i'm ha very happy uh we turn out <laughs> when you finish your studies uh, you don't know what to do um you have, you're not specialized, you, you have maybe no idea, that was the same for me. I was just thinking about so what, what I like in my private life, and it was technology. And I'm, I'm a fan of technology. You can also think of what courses you liked that was connected for me. I also liked, I think it was information systems was called the course, I'm not sure. Um, but just think what, what was the most fun for you in university, if you have no idea, right? that it can usually help. Um, and then again, just apply for different positions, have interviews, ask recruiters. You can also, there are recruitment agencies and it's literally their job to figure out the right position for you. So don't be afraid to just write someone and say, hey, look, I have a, you know, I, I, I have a master's or I soon have a master's, you know, I'm, I'm going to be on the labor market, um, but I, I'm not sure uh, what I should do uh, with this. Maybe you can help. And um, yeah, they, they will be interested in helping you because uh, not only is, is that their job usually to figure mm -hmm. out what you want, but also they get commission if they give you a job afterwards. I uh, basically always wanted to become a pilot, right? So this was my childhood dream. <laughs> I applied to Lufthansa uh, and failed the okay. test. So after that, you do not have too many different alternatives anymore, or you really uh, spend uh, 200,000 to, to do your private uh, um, yeah, uh, training. And then you are still not sure if you actually find a job at one of the large airlines. So um, I think what was driving me is basically the aim to find a global international job that is dealing with different cultures, people from different backgrounds, uh, and ideally based across 
across the world. I think that was the, the main driving force, so that you also have uh, possibilities, for example, at some point to work in a different location. Um, and the specific industry actually didn't really matter too much, right? I, I, I didn't grow up having a passion for uh, big container ships, right? Which is actually right now, so to say, my daily business. Um, the fascination is more really how, how the global economy, how global trade works. And this is, of course, something that directly then also fits into my current role. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't have any specific industry uh, to, to focus on. And um, generally speaking, for me, it's also more important how the actual company culture is, like um, who are the people I'm dealing with on a daily basis? Um, how is this relationship? And I think if you have a great company culture where you can, um, you know, speak up for yourself, where you have flat hierarchies, that is, um, for me personally, so much more worth than a specific industry or spe specific name of, um, of an employer. I knew I wanted to work for a small company. I knew I wanted to work for a creative company just because I, it, during my studies, I learned that I, I was interested in creativity. I wrote my bachelor thesis about it and that was something that drove me, I guess. Um, and then I just started looking at, at, at vacancies in that, in that particular direction. And I didn't know when I, um, wrote that motivation letter and sent my CV, I didn't know if this was going to be my dream job. I just took a guess. And, uh, and I think the only way of uh, learning if you like it is doing it. It was really, really random to be honest. So um, now that I'm working for an NGO, I really enjoy it. Um, it's definitely something that I think really is a benefit of my job. Um, basically, I, everything you do, you do for a good cause. And that's different, of course, when you're working for a corporate or also a consultancy. So looking back, I think this is a really good choice um, that I made. But at that point, I wasn't really thinking about it.